Tonight, a Canadian researcher is providing advice on whether kids should head back to the classroom. Dr. Stephen Friedman has been studying the impact of COVID-19 on kids around the world and plans to send his own children to school next month. As Heather Yerkes West reports, he says to weigh the decision carefully and keep medical evidence in mind. Chris Faulkner has decided to send his four and a half year old daughter to preschool this fall, but he still has concerns. Lots of concern. I don't feel like uh, our our provincial government is doing much, if anything, to, to sort of help parents. And it's really frustrating and, and frightening. Back to school is fraught with anxiety for many parents. But a Canadian researcher studying COVID-19 in kids believes the medical evidence should ease some of those fears. I have two kids and my kids are returning to school um, in September. Dr. Stephen Friedman's research looks at how COVID-19 has impacted children in 13 different countries. And while his study's data has not yet been analyzed, Friedman says we already know kids have a very low risk of becoming seriously ill from the virus. Most children have mild illness. Um, we don't think they tend to have significant long-term complications. Um, and severe illness is exceedingly rare in children. The bigger concern, however, is over kids spreading the illness to vulnerable family members. After months apart, grandmother Jennifer Goldade is finally spending time with her grandkids. But she says she'd likely have to keep her distance if they went back to school. I have friends that work in schools, and so they're in their 50s and 60s now, and maybe kids mostly don't get too sick, but that doesn't mean they're not going to get sick. We still don't know how well children transmit COVID-19, especially if they're asymptomatic. Friedman plans to tackle that question in a separate study launching later this month. Evidence has shown, however, that public health measures can lower the risk of virus spread. I'm a big advocate of, of mandatory masking. I think the emphasis also needs to be on hand washing or sanitizer and maintaining and keeping vigilance that those are being done very, very frequently throughout the day. He also recommends parents make sure their kids get flu shots this year because we don't know the impact of co-infections. And Freeman says there's a possibility kids could become seriously ill if infected with a combination of the seasonal flu and COVID-19. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. The COVID-19 curve is veering upward again, in large part by infections among younger people ages 20 to 39. Health officials in Alberta and B.C. are stepping up their efforts to inform that age group that the risk to them and others is real. Jennifer Palmer reports. A day at the beach, a great way to beat the summer heat, but crowds pose a danger as infections increase. It's outside, there's a lot of space, fresh air, I think. It's a little bit safer than being inside. I hope youth out there are taking it very seriously because if we uh, don't respect it, it, it could get out of control. COVID-19 numbers are hitting record highs in British Columbia and Alberta. Both provinces seeing hundreds of new cases being recorded over the past few days with a recent surge in new cases being driven primarily by young adults aged 20 to 39. Young people really can get very sick and die. Young people can be really severely affected by this disease and I don't want that to get overlooked. I never thought I would get it so anything is possible. 26 right? year old Vince Lee was hit hard by the virus. He's a fitness instructor and practices mixed martial arts. He had no underlying health conditions and managed type 2 diabetes through diet and exercise. I didn't have a lot of time after the x-ray I was just put under a medically induced coma immediately so I didn't have time to think I was just more Panicking that I saw ventilators, I was like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> this is real. We've all heard about a second wave, in particular in the fall. But is it here now? Numbers are spiking and flu season is weeks away. Is this the start of wave two? Is this a continuation of wave one? I, I think it's almost an academic discussion. The point is that we're having a, a significant rise um, in cases. It's a new normal all of us have to navigate as the virus hits peaks and valleys potentially through 2022. COVID is going to be with us for a long time. What I'm hoping is that through a combination of treatments, hopefully a vaccine and, and better testing technology, it can become um, the background noise and not the thing that dominates the news headlines. Jennifer Palma, Global News, Vancouver.